My name is Tarmac and welcome to a GNOME review. See the description for timecode jump points to the various sections of this video that you can use to skip to the things most important to your buying decisions. The Legend of K was originally released on the PS2 in 2005, with a later port to the DS in 2010. It was remastered by Nordic Games for a Wii U, PS3, PS4, PC, and OS X release on July 28, 2015. In this new release, Nordic remastered the texture quality, they added new, more detailed character models, utilized modern rendering techniques, and implemented surround sound. It's a third-person platformer with combat, and you play as K, the child prodigy cat turned savior of all things. This review is of the game as a whole, however, not just the pieces that they remastered, so keep that in mind. It's worth noting that I don't have a level of nostalgia with this game as I've never played the original. Let's get on with it. To start with, the game doesn't seem to be particularly well optimized on PC. My specs are in the description. A game that is this old with really only new textures and models has no excuse for running sub 60 frames per second on an i7 and GTX 970. There were times where the performance would drop for a short period, but for the most part, it was fluid. The controls leave much to be desired. Camera intelligence is problematic. There are numerous sections where the game will take away camera control from the player in small confined areas, and it's painfully obvious that the reason that this occurs is because the camera, when left to its own meddling, clips badly. In addition to the camera having these problems, the player will occasionally have K not respond as expected to keyboard input. This appears to be a problem when entering water. When falling into water, the character seems to respond to input as though forward was influenced by the direction of travel, not the direction of the camera. This resulted in more deaths than I want to admit to. In any platforming game, controls need to be precise. If the player ever feels like they died because the game controls betrayed them, it is a significant mark against the game, and it happened to me a lot. I also wanted to mention the boar racing specifically. The controls felt infuriating to me, but I'm giving the game a free pass on it because I feel like that was more a lack of skill, and the races were over and started again so quickly that very little time was lost because of the game itself. Combat is actually where this game really shines in my opinion. When you start out, everything is incredibly simple and feels rough. As you progress, however, more abilities and weapons unlock as one would expect. The basic three attack strike remains a staple of the combat to be sure, but lightning strikes rolling behind enemies that are blocking and leaping strikes for stunned creatures add a significant amount of variety to the game. My favorite combat element though, if I had to pick one, and I do, is leaping from target to target through the combo system. It can be used in combat, but it's also cleverly utilized in getting to otherwise inaccessible areas via chongs, these fancy spinning bell-like constructs. Given the simple nature of a number of the game features, I found the combat to be intricate and well done. I will say that I found it problematic to have combat initiate cutscenes quite as often as it did. The game seems to want to give you random vocal quips, when really it should just let combat begin immediately more often. The remaster does look better than the 2005 version. That said, the new textures and models are simply not impressive for a game released in 2015. Ground and flora textures are very plain, and while some of the characters look okay, I'm stuck wondering just how much dev time was put into the remaster. There are no graphical customization options as far as quality, resolution, and so on. It is possible for the player to change resolution by using a config INI file, but that's a dev hack, not an officially supported feature. Outside of that basic resolution change, the only customization that can be done is gamma correction. Obviously, for a game initially released for the PS2 and DS, there wasn't a need for more than that, but when you port to PC, having proper graphical options is important. The music design is quite pleasant, with a very obvious Asian flair to it. The song choice and ambient audio are well done, really add to the atmosphere of each unique zone. On the negative side, however, the voice acting is absolutely atrocious. A majority of the voice actors have very little emphasis and enthusiasm for their lines, which makes even otherwise potentially comedic statements utterly cringeworthy. Unfortunately, K is not one of the good ones, and given that you hear him speak so often, the lack of quality here is reinforced constantly. The Confederate with gorilla beasties bring trouble on, but us frogs don't give up easy. Oh no, we entrench in our villages and make ready to repel foreign invader. Huh? What the heck are you talking about? We be attacked, boss. Attacked? It's also worth mentioning that there are frequent sections where a reasonable, quick cutscene is used that cannot be skipped on the first pass. The animations and other visuals used aren't particularly impressive, and they seem to be designed primarily to showcase some character dialogue. But the dialogue is lackluster as well. I don't know why they wanted to showcase it.
There weren't any major crashes or game-breaking QA issues that I ran into during my playthrough of the game. In researching online, some users on PC have reported cutscene crashes as well as very poor performance during cutscenes even if it doesn't crash. I did not have this issue, but I wanted to mention it anyways. I also believe that the control issue that I mentioned earlier is merely a bug that was never addressed. In a third-person platform, there's no reason that pressing forward on the keyboard should make the character run or swim towards me instead of in the direction that the camera is facing. That's probably the most frustrating bug that I encountered in my playthrough. The Legend of K is fun enough as a diversion. Its combat is intricate and engaging, but sometimes it takes too long to get into combat with the unskippable cutscenes. Dialogue and voiceovers feel phoned in, and outside of a few characters who were reasonable, most lines that could otherwise be clever just made me shake my head. The platforming is fun for the most part, especially when trying to access out-of-the-way areas via the Chongs. I feel like there was a lost opportunity here to make other modifications. Obviously a remaster has a certain obligation to retain an amount of the nostalgia that gamers are looking for, but corrections could have been made to the camera. Cutscenes that are unimportant could have been made skippable. Remastering textures could have been done better for background surfaces like ground and plants. It's not a bad game, but it's not a good game either. It could have been done better in so many different ways. All in all, the Legend of K Anniversary HD Remaster can be a bit of old school fun, but I would wait for a sale if you aren't picking it up because of nostalgia for the original. It seems to me that the nostalgia is important for enjoyment of this particular game. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. You can go watch another video now if you like. I just wanted to explain a few things about how these GNOME reviews are going to be handled. I sometimes get games early by way of review code, but I'll also purchase games on release if I need to do so. I will never favor developers who provide review code over others because that's phenomenally unethical. Keep in mind that all they're really doing is giving me work to do, and while I enjoy that work, it is work nonetheless. Now, I don't really like review scores because they're a bit too simple and lack nuance. However, I know that they're important to a lot of people, so I will use them. My review system is fairly simple, with 1 to 4 out of 10 being a game to avoid entirely, 5 to 7 out of 10 being a game that could be worthwhile if you buy it on sale, or if you have some other burning desire to play it and can overlook significant issues, and 8 to 10 out of 10 being games that are worth buying immediately and for full price. These are all simply my opinions. I may discuss objective deficiencies, but at the end of the day, a review is subjective and should be treated as such. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was informative. My name's Tarmac. Cheers.